Wolf the Quarrelsome was an 11th century Irish warrior who was known at the time as the biggest and most crotch-meltingly ferocious barbarian on the planet. Brother of the legendary Irish High King Brian Boru, Wolf's mother was killed by a Norse raiding party while he was still young, allowing him to cultivate an unending hatred for everything Viking-related. While Wolf honed his ability to crack people's heads open with a gigantic face-cleaving axe and slam their hands shut in car doors, Brian made a name for himself by uniting all the Irish peoples under one banner and standing up to the combined forces of Viking jackasses across the island. You see, back in the day, Ireland was divided into a bunch of puny little kingdoms, pointless city-states, and other such garbage, so Brian put together a giant army, kicked the bejesus out of a few dozen rival warlords, and unified the country, breaking the political hold the Scandinavian nations held over Ireland in the process. Well, apparently not everyone realized how totally sweet it was to be ruled by High King Brian Boru, so some whiskey-swilling turf cutters from the province of Leicester decided to be complete dicks in revolt. In order to help them kick Irish ass, they called in their BFFs, a horde of goddamn bloodthirsty Viking pillagers. Tens of thousands of Vikings, Irishmen, and other assorted Celtic and Gaelic warriors met at the Battle of Clontarf in 1014, and immediately proceeded to beat the hell out of each other with swords, hammers, axes, fists, tin pots, shields, stray cats, lead pipes, pitchforks, stun guns, shopping carts, bread, very small rocks, a duck, and whatever the hell else they managed to bring along with them. It was at this point in history that Wolf the Quarrelsome proved himself to be the most hardcore badass in an arena filled with hardcore badasses. Now, in order to fully appreciate the importance of his actions, let's take a moment to examine Wolf the Quarrelsome from an historical perspective. First off, his name is Wolf. You don't get to be called Wolf by being a 70-pound nerd that gives himself a hernia trying to pick up a box of file folders. Wolf is a serious name. In the Viking histories, his first name is translated as Ulf, and we all know that Ulf is the sort of name that's reserved for guys who eat entire chickens in one sitting, drink their weight in beer, grow beards at the rate of one inch per hour, wail death metal on guitars shaped like lightning bolts, play professional ice hockey, and are so ripped that every time they flex their pecs, their shirt explodes and flies off into the atmosphere. Ulf isn't a name. It's the guttural sound that your enemies make when you punch them in the stomach with enough force to make Rocky Balboa cough up blood. As if this isn't enough, his epithet is the quarrelsome. And you can be pretty damn sure that you don't get an epithet like the quarrelsome by taking crap like an overworked fecal analysis technician. Quarrelsome, by definition, means that you completely destroy anyone that messes with you, so we can assume that this guy was so good at putting bitches in their place that his name became synonymous with beating the hell out of people for little to no reason. That's pretty epic. As the champion of the Irish forces, you also have to assume that Wolf was even more hardcore than the biggest, meanest, axe-swinging, Guinness-chugging, shillelagh-busting, hooligan-bastard rugby player you've ever seen. The guy probably drank whiskey by the barrel and then went out in the woods to chop down trees with his crotch so he could whittle the ends into points with his teeth and hurl them at enemy castles. Another thing that totally rocks about Wolf the Quarrelsome is that he only appears in history twice, and both times he's kicking ass. It's those folks that are shrouded in mystery who are often the most interesting, and Wolf is no exception. We never learned about his policy-making efforts. We don't know anything about his childhood, his girlfriend, his favorite color, or what he liked to do in his spare time. When you read a history of his life, you only learn one thing. He kicked a lot of asses. That's it. So when Brian Beru's army went up against the Vikings at Clontarf, you could rest assured that Wolf was right in the middle of the near-limitless carnage. The main thrust of the Viking offensive was personally led by an ill-tempered warrior named Brodeer of Man, a legendary berserker so manly that it was his name. Brodeer was one of those helmet-with-a-horns-on-it bastards with a giant long axe and an exceedingly bad attitude, and his force was really whipping Irish balls all over the place. Wolf the Quarrelsome got sick of that pretty fast, sought Brodeer out on the battlefield, and engaged him in one-on-one -on -one combat. Brodeer of Man took one shot at Wolf. Wolf sidestepped him and bashed him in the face with an axe, knocking him to the ground. Brodeer tried to scramble to his feet, but Wolf smashed him with another mighty blow that sent him crumpling back down to earth. Brodeer stumbled to his feet again, and this time Wolf kicked his ass down the side of a hill. By this point, the big bad Viking warlord decided he'd had enough of getting his face wrecked by an obviously superior warrior, and ran for it like a little girl skipping away from an anthill. With the Viking commander no longer leading his army, Wolf the Quarrelsome almost single-handedly cut a swath of destruction through the enemy ranks, severing countless limbs and adding a nice glossy crimson sheen to his axe blade as the Irish forces began to rout their Leicester and Viking foes. By the end of the day, 6,000 Viking warriors had been slain, and the political power the Viking aristocracy held over Ireland was forever broken. However, it wasn't all unicorns, rainbows, butterflies, and giant piles of severed Viking heads for the Celtic warriors at Clontarf. You see, as Brodeer of Man and his entourage of elite warriors was bravely running away from the serious ass-kicking Wolf the Quarrelsome had righteously laid upon them, by sheer stroke of luck they came across the tent of Brian Boru. Now while Brian Boru was a pretty strapping dude back in the day, at the time of the Battle of Clontarf he was like 80 years old, 
The Vikings busted into his tent, caught him in the middle of his prayers, chopped his head off, and ran off into the woods yelling about how awesome they were. About an hour later, Wolf the Quarrelsome returned to report victory and found the decapitated corpse of his older brother. This sent him into a completely insane rage, and he swore vengeance on the man who had killed his brother and his king. He immediately put together a force of tough-as-hell Celtic warriors and set out to jack Brodier up, because as you can probably imagine, medieval badasses with names like Wolf the Quarrelsome don't screw around for one second when it comes to living for revenge. He and his men hunted down the Viking raiders and engaged them in the most brutal hand-to-hand -hand combat this side of the original Mortal Kombat arcade game. All of Brodier's men were slain, and Wolf took down Brodier himself with a perfectly executed judo shoulder throw followed by a punch to the throat. Then he cut open Brodier's stomach with a huge battle axe, pulled out all of his entrails and tied them around a tree for some strange reason, causing Brodier to die a horrible and painful death. This is what happens when you mess with Wolf the Quarrelsome. You end up being strangled to death with your own intestines. After destroying Brodier, scattering the Viking army, and breaking Norse control over Ireland forever, Wolf the Quarrelsome promptly vanished from history.